morning, Miguel. Uh, welcome to Pavia University. We are very happy to have you as a visiting professor uh, at uh, the uh, course of Agri-Food Sustainability. Uh, this uh, is a new course and uh, um, we uh, are very interested in uh, agroecology. Uh, so uh, I have some questions for you. Um, in order to introduce this matter, quite new but not uh, totally new in uh, uh, our country, but I think interesting for the future of agriculture in uh, Italy but also in the world. Um, I know you are one of the most uh, important uh, um, uh, philosophers of agroecology, uh, but also a teacher uh, at, the, at Berkeley University, a researcher in this uh, field and also writer of many books. But uh, uh, which is your story? Where are you coming from and what have you studied at the university? Well, uh, thank you very much, first of all, Professor Rossi, for the invitation to Pavia. Um, I, um, I was born in Chile. Mm -hmm. My father was from Napoli, Napoli. immigrant. <laughs> and then uh, circumstances of life, I ended up um, uh, doing my uh, master's first in Colombia and then in the United States in Florida, University of Florida, and I did a PhD and then in entomology. And then I moved to California as a professor in 1981. And I was there for 38 years as professor. Now I'm Professor Emeritus. I still have activities at the university, but also internationally. And uh, which uh, were the subject of your teaching? Well, initially I started working in biological control of pests, which is alternative to chemical pesticides. There was a big group in California working on that at Berkeley. And then I discovered that the problem were not the pests, but the problem was the way we farm. So we needed to change our farming systems to make them less vulnerable to pests. And that's, uh, I learned a lot from traditional farmers in Latin America how to do that because they've been having systems that have stood the test of time for centuries. They're very resilient systems that diversified. And so we, we learned the principles of agroecology from studying these traditional systems. And then they take different technological far forms, obviously in modern uh, systems. Yeah, you, you say about uh this uh, uh, old uh, tradition in uh, farming activity from uh, campesinos. Yeah. But uh, um, I am thinking about uh, our uh, agri agro industry in Western countries, but also in uh, developing countries, in big countries like uh, China or India. And uh, um, uh, I am thinking uh, uh, if uh, agroecology can help uh, this uh, uh, agroindustry uh, in a, a special uh, time uh, as we are now. Climate change affects on agriculture. Uh, with a, a global uh, crisis uh, of uh, production and uh, um, uh, everyday farmers also here in Italy, also here in Pavia, in Lombardy, have the problem of water. We haven't uh, water, it is no, no raining, or when we have uh, rains, we have disaster, floods everywhere. Um, maybe, in your opinion, agroecology uh, helping this system uh, in order to change something? I don't know. Yeah, of course. I mean, industrial agriculture is in crisis. First of all, because it's very vulnerable to climate change. Is highly dependent on external inputs, petroleum, which is becoming more and more expensive. Now with the crisis in Ukraine, Russia, the, the cost of uh, these inputs has gone up. Um, so we need to change the system and agroecology, what it does, it provides principles on how to transition from these modern monocultures that are highly dependent on external inputs to modern diversified systems that can be managed with machinery, but their, their, their design is totally different. It's based on, on ecological principles, not on inputs. It's more of an agriculture of processes. So, for example, in California, there are many, many farmers, commercial farmers, also in Chile, in, in, in Colombia, there are large farmers also. 
they are adopting agroecological principles in their large operations and they're cutting the cost of production in about 40 to 50 percent, which makes them very viable economically. So, for example, in vineyards, we introduce cover crops in the winter. In the summer, we provide uh, flowers for beneficial insects to control pests. So the cover crops increase organic matter in the soil. The organic matter, for every percent of organic matter that you increase, you increase the, the water storage capacity in about 16 liters per square meter. Uh, in addition to that, you activate soil biology. There are some my, uh, mycorrhiza fungi that help also the plants to, to survive under stress conditions. And, and what we do, we set in motion uh, ecological processes in large farms, in small farms, that make the systems less dependent on external inputs, more and more dependent on ecological interactions and processes. Thank you very much, Miguel, for this explanation of your history and studies and activity. Uh, I think it is uh, uh, quite important, this linkage between uh, ecology and uh, um, uh, agronomy. I am a, a plant ecologist, a botanist, and uh, uh, for example, I am interested in the uh, biodiversity conservation and use also for uh, uh, land races, for example. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe possible, I, I ask you if uh, it is uh, a, an option to use uh, old varieties, uh, for example, corns, uh, or um, also, I don't know, uh, different uh, horticulture products of the past uh, in order to have a, 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 a production uh, for the future. Uh, you think it is a useful biodiversity, traditional biodiversity for an agroecological approach or not? Yes, absolutely. I mean, traditional varieties are fundamental are the fundamental genetic basis of modern agriculture and uh, the use of traditional varieties local varieties that are adapted to local environments is fundamental for example we find that modern varieties are more productive than traditional varieties only when there is water and, and yes. nitrogen when you don't have water actually and you measure the productivity instead of kilograms per hectare you measure kilograms per hectare per centimeter of water traditional varieties are three times more, more efficient in the use of water. So for the scenarios of um, climate change, especially areas that are gonna suffer drought, traditional varieties adapted to dry environments is fundamental, but it has to be complemented with management also. So organic matter in, uh, increases, uh, mulching to cover the soil so that there's not evaporation, etc., etc. Is, is, is fundamental approach. And so we in agroecology use modern varieties or traditional varieties, but complemented with management of the environment. And what we have found is that when you have crop diversity, genetic diversity and species diversity, and the drought comes or a big event like a hurricane, the systems that are more diversified suffer less damage than monoculture systems. This is totally, uh, recorded in the literature and has been uh, studied uh, deeply. Last question is about uh, uh, books. Uh, you have uh, uh, written a lot of, of uh, books, uh, not only papers, scientific papers, some manuals, also in, in uh, Italian, uh, Agroecologia, uh, Sulla Via della Madre Terra, um, are two examples. Uh, Yes. Um, what you can say about these manuals? You suggest to our <laughs> students, uh, but also people, to, yeah. to uh, have a look to these books? Yes. Well, my connection with Italy is, um, is a long standing. I've been coming to Italy for the last uh, 30 years. And I, the first time I came to Italy, I came uh, to Padua with Professor um, Paoletti, who was promoting agroecology at that time. So um, there was interest early on in trying to translate our books that were uh, in, in English to Italian. So the first book um, was published back in the, in the early 2000. 
uh, by editoria, editoriale, I forget the name of the editoriale, eh? the Agricola, I think. Sí, 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 Agricola. And the second one by, um, by uh, Avoca, mm -hmm. which is um, a company. Yes. Uh, they actually produce organic uh, plants for their for their perfume and, 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 and also their drugs and so on. And uh, the second book is more is, is a little bit broader. It's a short version summary that talks about agroecology as a science and, and also as a practice, but also as a social movement because agroecology also wants to transform the food system, not just maintain the structure the way it is, but change the social, economic, and political structure of agriculture. Okay, thank you very much. Thank for... you very much for the invitation. Uh -huh.